Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 676 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Stormy Knight, and I did confirm that that is her real name. All right, because I didn't believe it until she told me the story of it. But uh, we'll have her uh, tell you how it came about. And uh, I love the people who've been in the game almost as long as I have. I started in 1994 selling online, and she, I think, is 95 or something like that. So that that's is, right. That's uh, been around a long time, seen a lot of stuff come and go, that's for sure. Uh, but she's going to talk about search engine optimization, which um, – People listening to this show know I've ragged against for years, but she concentrates on local SEO and reputation management and those kinds of things, which uh, absolutely, if you're going to do something local, which I want you to expand your local business uh, using digital products so you can bring in extra cash flow. But if you are in a local business, you need to know about the things that she's going to talk about today. And uh, one of the, you know, she speaks about this stuff and one of the, uh, testimonials of her speeches is that uh, it says, uh, and I quote, Stormy did a good job of providing a balanced point of view. Both the pros and cons were discussed. And uh, that's the whole thing because you get these people hyping up stuff. Oh, this is the greatest uh, dog poop ever. And uh, you know, we can really get your <laughs> dog poop selling uh, well with. <laughs> and so uh, my, my old saying is, is that you can pour sugar all day long on dog poop. And it will not turn into candy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's going to give us a fair look of what you have to do and what you don't have to do and what it's uh, how much trouble you got to go through to get found in local search and keep your reputation up while you're at it. Um, and then we'll talk about some uh, uh, specialized uh, uh, software service she has about uh, getting reviews, which are critical nowadays when people are making uh, purchase decisions. So we'll bring her on in a minute. I hope you didn't miss episode 675. Uh, as you know, I have been taking you on my journey into TikTok. And uh, so far, I have not been kidnapped and put into child slavery. So apparently that's a good thing. Um, uh, but I don't know. They might be coming after me. I'm not big enough on TikTok yet, but uh, we'll see. So episode 675, I told you about some of the techniques I've been learning about. I've been taking advanced courses for about a month now and uh, making some great inroads on that. All right, and I want to thank the folks uh, helping us out with Patreon, uh, which is our uh, uh, kind of a donation service, uh, thanking us for the good content we put out here. But I'm not taking any of the money for myself. It's all, everything but the Patreon fees are going to uh, fund the scholarship program we have for persons with disabilities. So uh, we start as little as $3 a month. And I mean, we've got hundreds of training episodes and scootthecommute.com slash training. And then probably 400 or more interviews with great people like Stormy. And uh, we'd uh, love for your help with that. So you can go to screwthecommute.com slash Patreon and uh, kick in whatever you want. We have a lot of perks there for you. Now, I hope you didn't forget to download a copy of our automation ebook. This Just one of the tips in this book has saved me over we. We actually estimated like 8 million keystrokes over the past many years. So, so uh, check that out. It's, uh, we sell it for 27 bucks, but it's yours free for listening to the show at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And while you're at it, take a, get a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. Put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. All right, let's get to the main event. We've got Stormy Night here. She's got 27 years of experience in search engine optimization. She has uh, distilled all of her experience down to the simple basics that any small business person can understand. And I've listened to her on some of the other shows, and, and she understands that uh, what she talks about could glaze over your eyeballs. You know, So she, she, she makes it. Uh, she's not the typical propeller head, which I just bought a new propeller head hat that I'm going to use in my... Uh, and some of my TikTok videos, because we have techno geeks and propeller heads, we lovingly call these folks. 
um, that she's worked as a, a speaker for the launch program for Google My Business, which has changed its name recently. So some highly paid executive could, you know, make their worth, I guess. I don't know why they do these things. But she knows uh, small business owners want the information that's understandable and implementable. So, Stormy, are you ready to screw? I certainly am. All right. How you doing there, Stormy? Good. I'm doing really good today. Ah, it's awesome. So, uh, now, in all the stuff I was looking at and all the search engines you remember from back in the day, and I remember, you left out one. Ask Jeeves. Remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do remember Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves, folks, was something that uh, you're supposed to be able to ask them in a normal question and get the answer from Jeeves the butler, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, that was a major, that was a major yeah. step forward. Yeah, I in mean. In terms of usability. I re See, I remember I, uh, I was taught by what was, I don't know if you knew the guy or not, but he was considered one of the best of the best in the day as Michael Campbell. And mm -hmm. he, he could get all 10 positions in Alta Vista for himself and his clients. And Alta Vista actually called him up and said, hey, Michael, come on. You know, he wasn't cheating or doing anything bad. He's just, he could beat the system because the system wasn't much in those days, right? Yeah. I mean, you could basically, if you wanted to do well for London, you could type London <laughs> a lot of times on a single page. Right. <laughs> chances are good. You could be in the top 10. And so. you could hide it in the, and make it the same color as the background. And yeah. All those things. <laughs> things that, I still hear people talking about stuff today that would just totally get you banned like 20 years ago. And there's still uh, trying to, but, um, but uh, you got into it in an interesting fashion. Tell them how you came about uh, getting into this line of work. Well, the first thing was um, I wanted to be a travel agent. And um, we started a website called bargaintravel.com and selling and consolidated airline tickets. And right after we did that, we went to a trade show and Google had a booth and <laughs> the two founders uh, were manning the booth. And so we said, we never heard of your search engine. And they said, oh, it's going to be a really big search engine. And here's what you need to do to, you know, to do well in our search engine. And so we went back and, and uh, did what they told us to do. And uh, we were number one for consolidated airline tickets for years and years until we sold it, I guess, about roughly 10 years later, 12 years later. Um, and that helped. That was, that, that bought us a house. Um, so yeah, that was how we got into SEO, just trying to do well for ourselves. And as we started to go, well, we're going to sell this property. What should we do? We said, well, we know search engine optimization because we've been doing it on our own properties. And uh, we'd, been, we'd been in web development other than that. And as we went along, uh, that's what we ended up doing. And then we went into local more because the impact – when you do SEO, um, as we discussed right before the podcast, you really are dealing with uh, a lot of different moving parts, and they change all the time. So it's a it's a a tough race. But Google has to be more um, simple for local because business people don't have time to to chase SEO. Uh, so there's they've try to make it as simple as they possibly can, which is to consolidate all the information for local businesses inside of their Google business profiles. Yeah. And, and that's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and uh, this name change thing, <laughs> it just cracks me up. You know, I've been in business my whole life, never had a job. That's why it's called screw the commute. And if you didn't know, but <laughs> sometimes you see these things and like, why? Well, you know, some highly paid executive had to, you know, make their worth. So they decided to change a name of something. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's a common thing at Google. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why uh, I'm a Google ads partner and they've changed the name of Google ads several times over mm -hmm. the years. Yeah. There isn't, there isn't too many Google projects that, that have not had their names changed. Yeah. And, and I'm all for uh, making things better, but like, for instance, you know, I, I advertise on Google but not every day like an agency person would be in there all day long. Right. And so every single time I go back, something's moved. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? I, I can't find it. It takes me an hour to put an ad in that should have taken five minutes. 
<laughs> yeah. They moved something. And, and they had kind of held off for a while because of during COVID. And now it's like every single thing that was on the roadmap <laughs> from the end of 2019 to the middle of last year is all getting rolled out almost. Yeah. I, I'm in there once a week and I'm having the same. Exactly. Issue. Exactly. Now, uh, um, now just a little history for, for folks. And I've, I've been preaching this for years is, you know, back before Google, you could, you know, use some of these search engines like Alta Vista, and you'd have to sift through 20 pages of garbage to find anything you wanted. And when Google came right. around, they said, you know what, that's not acceptable. We're going to make the first page, you're going to find what you want. And they did it and bam, boy, <laughs> they turned into one of the biggest companies in the world just uh, by pleasing people with finding stuff that they actually want. Right. And that's why I say that Google's product is good search results. Yes, exactly. In fact, I, I've preached that they hate us. We're we're necessary evil, us website owners. <laughs> they just use yeah, us. Yeah, and we're usually trying to do something that they don't want us to do. Yeah, they don't like us. <laughs> yeah but they, they used us to uh, become a trillion-dollar company. So um, now uh, you with your travel agency, I think you used a thing called a geographic qualifier. Is that right? So you, you – uh, picked a destination or the name of a city or something to uh, to cut out the competitors for other things right right you had to produce uh, you had to produce content mm -hmm. um, for every single combination that you could think of right <laughs> so I mean we were in the thousands of pages of content when we sold the property and one of the reasons we sold the property is that there was a lot of rumors going around that Google was going to, to become an aggregator of flight information which they did to a certain extent, um, but not as badly as at the time that we were looking at it. We were saying, okay, if we're, if we're, if the people who are sending us business goes into our business, we have a problem. <laughs> so, yeah. so that was, that was one of the reasons that, you know, the precursors of why, why we chose to sell it. And it's, I don't know what the status of it is right now, but well, well, yeah, we used to uh, used to teach. You know, I taught lots of professional speakers over the years, and and I used to teach them. You know, have a page where it's a professional speaker, uh, Los Angeles, professional speaker, San Francisco. You know, right. <laughs> a different page for each one, uh, just because a lot of the meeting planners didn't want to pay travel expenses, <laughs> so, so it'd pretend like you were local. I mean, all these things that just cracks me up that we used to do um in the day um but um the uh the local search uh, so if somebody is listening and they do have a dental office or uh any kind of local a business a restaurant or something so what are some of the tips you have for the, for them well uh we've got two two things to think about and four things to do okay so good and simple the first thing which is a concept is you need to tell why Google should show you in search results. And that is the Google business profile, which used to be called Google, my business. Um, if you go to business.google.com uh, and you type in your business name, you can see whether or not it's ever been set up or claimed. You can also go to Google and just search on your company name. And if on the right hand side of the screen, there is information there, even if you didn't set it up, Google has your company information. Google is the largest aggregator of business databases in the world. So whether or not you've claimed or set it up yourself, they may have already set it up from you based on your licensing, your business mm -hmm. um, profiles, you know, everything that is out in the public domain, your name, address, and phone number. If they have that basic information, they will put up a basic page about your business. Now, whether or not you're going to, to show up in search results has a lot to do with whether you claim it and you optimize it because they have a lot of information. They want to feel confident about the information that they have. And the best way to feel confident about it is to have the business person confirm that the information is correct. And then secondly, to get reviews from external people that prove that that business is actually active. Mm -hmm. So, that's telling Google why you should be in search results. That's your first step. The second step is telling searchers who now may find you online why you should do business with them, why they should do business with you, is the second concept. Because you want that 
you want the pictures that are there to make sense. You want the, all of the information to be complete. You want the hours to be there. If you carry particular product lines, if you're a retailer, you should have that information in there. All of those pieces are going to come back when someone finds you online and convince the person that you're the solution that they went online looking for when they started. So those two things are, they overlap with each other. Google wants to have good search results. So if they have the information to feel confident and people are coming to the information that Google has and saying, aha, this is where I want to go, that tells Google that they have good information too. And that helps keep moving you up either by putting you in the three pack, which is data that's tied to Google Maps. So when you do a search on Dentist, you'll usually see some ads. Um, and then you'll see a little map with the upside down red teardrops and then the, the listing information. All of that information comes straight out of the Google business profile. So that's why those that is the basically the key to reaching out to both the people that are searching for what you do and Google. Now, do you see any value, Stormy, for someone that doesn't care about local business, even doesn't even want local business? to go ahead and fill this out and and put reviews in and so forth but um and maybe their business location but they're an inner maybe they're a consultant that consults with people all over the world is is there any value to filling yeah. it out there is for the, the 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 first one which is google wants to know who you are and what you do and they want a confirmation on that. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that's of value to somebody who isn't a local business. You can tell Google, Google your business service area is North America. Okay. Now, granted, now you're in a you're in a foot race with every other consultant right, in North America that does what you do. But at least Google knows definitively that if somebody is in Cincinnati and you're in San Diego, and they type in something that's fairly specific to what you do that they should show you in the search results. Now, whether or not that happens, but the more information you can give Google about what you do, it's a win. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's no because downside to it. Right, there's absolutely no downside to it. I have, I had a client as a consultant who couldn't be found anywhere and she was, she was adamant about the fact that she's a consultant for a specific type of quality control on a specific type of machine. <laughs> and there's only eight people in the United States that's certified in this. And she wasn't showing up on the first page. So statistically, something was wrong. She thinks since there's 10 search results <laughs> in. <laughs> so we went back and we did some general cleanup on our website and we made sure that everything was crawlable and we got, you know, Yoast in there and then we set up her Google business profile and her Google business profile is now showing up. So, Beautiful. so that's exactly when someone searches in, you know, way, way, way outside of San Diego, which is where she was at. See, so I, I know a lot of fraudulent consultants, you give them money and then you can never find where they are and they leave, they leave town. Yeah, come and get me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to cost you some money to come get me. Um, so that, yeah, there is no, there's no downside to telling Google about your business. Got it. So you said you there was two things and then three things. What was the other? Yeah, well, it's now here. So here's your task list. You go to Google business profile, number one, you, op, you claim it, which usually is pretty simple. If you have the same telephone number that's already listed in Google, mm -hmm. then your phone will ring. If you're sitting next to the phone and now you're verified. Got it. Um, if you have not, to they'll send you a postcard. Because, because I don't answer anything anymore with the <laughs> robo calls. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have the same issue. Um, and then you optimize your Google business profile. You add in every single thing that they have a field for you to put in. Do you have ADA access? Do you have restrooms? You know, are you closed on what holidays? Um, if you are a hotel, um, directions from the nearest airport. I mean, every single thing that a user would theoretically want to know about your business should be included in there. Happy pictures, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I, I'm in a webinar that I do, uh, be sure to put your logo in because there was a kids play facility where the uh, owner was arrested and there was no logo. And so the only picture that Google could find that was related to the owner of the business was his mugshot. So you don't want that to happen. So make sure. That I think that's good. good that that happened. Tell you the truth. <laughs> um, so you, you got a felon. Um, so, and then start getting reviews 
as soon as you can from existing clients so that Google can say, aha, this indeed is a real life company with real life people who we know who they are somewhat because uh, you usually log in through your Google account to leave a review. Uh, and that will help you against whoever else you're competing with. Because the cool thing about local, besides it's simpler than regular SEO, is that they want they only you're only out trying to outrun whoever's your competitor in your local environment. Right. It's a foot race. So if there's five of you, all you have to do is be better than four other guys. Yeah, and uh, the the a lot of people are using the near me uh, in their search terms, right? So that can grab you know, I guess I don't know what the parameters or how many miles that consists of. Uh, is probably different for different types of businesses. Yeah, it is. As a matter of fact, um, here's here's the illustration I use. If you type in dry cleaners, you're going to find dry cleaners um, very close to your home because mm -hmm. Google's assumption is is that you are not going to drive past 20 dry cleaners to go to a dry cleaner. On the other hand, if you type in personal injury lawyer, for me, I live in uh, Santa Rosa, California. I'm 50 miles north of San Francisco. I'm shown personal injury lawyers in San Francisco because they have SEO'd their businesses up the wazoo mm -hmm. in terms of showing up in search results and have built their authority so that they're showing on the first page of results for probably a hundred mile radius. And they've probably paid a lot of money and created a lot of content to get that to happen. Because realistically, if I think this personal entry company, uh, law firm is great, I'll drive to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So they do treat it differently based on, you know, the assumptions of what the marketplace wants to see. And now if you're on your cell phone or tablet, and you have your locations on, uh, it's going to give those dry cleaners, if you're on the road speaking and you need a quick dry cleaner, uh, it's going to give you near where you're actually located, right? Yeah. So yeah, you, and for some reason, another, uh, I go through Comcast Business, and the primary server for Comcast Business is in Fairfield, which is about 40 miles from me. And so half the time, Google knows, well, Google knows, but everybody else, Best Buy and Home Depot and Target, they all think I'm in Fairfield. Google knows because I've mm -hmm. told them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, if if your location services aren't turned on, would it grab your IP address and, and, and try to do that? Try to tell yeah, them where you are? It'll yeah, it'll look for the what the, the mm -hmm. relative nature of the IP is. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm getting Comcast Business's lo local IP mm -hmm. in Fairfield. So Okay. Now you mentioned. Go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you mentioned no, reviews fine. and I wanted to get into that of, uh, you know, cause I do, even though I'm, you know, uh, you know, kind of rag against the national or international SEO nowadays, uh, reviews are still one of the, the main things to get business and no matter who you are, where you are. So, right. uh, so tell us, uh, start telling us about the importance of them, how you've, uh, you've created something to, uh, to help with that. Sure. Um, well, I think the pandemic, I mean, we all understand the pandemic kind of raised the numbers and percentages of everybody who's been trained now to look at reviews because we had to buy everything online mm -hmm. for a period of time. So all of the numbers that were from 2019 is, you know, roughly 20 to 50 percent more than they were in 2019 as of this year. Um, and so people are going to do their due diligence. Uh, in whatever it is, if you're buying baby carriages or looking for a pet sitter or, you know, hiring an estate lawyer, whatever it is, you're going to, first of all, ask the Google. Uh, if you haven't have been told something by your neighbor or your sister-in-law or something, you're going to go to Google and you're going to type in whatever the thing is that you're looking for, whatever the problem is you're solving. And then Google's going to do their best to show you, you know, a smorgasbord of things that you might want if you're looking for whatever it was you put in the search engines. That is going to be the first place where the person's going to start their, you know, their, their path to discover somebody who they're going to do business with. Those reviews from Google, they're going to show up in the, the local three pack if it is a local type business or it's a specific retailer or something like that. And that's going to be the first differentiator. Now to show up in that three pack, there are generally 
three things that make a big difference. One is the first one is proximity. Um, as we mentioned, it, they might cast a wide net, but in general, it is the proximity of where Google thinks you're located at. Because obviously you're not gonna drive by 20 dry cleaners to get to one just because it's got more stars than somebody else. But that being said, the next one is the general rating. That is, you know, if, if you got a five star, a four star, a three star, and you add them all together and you split them by the number, what is the rating of that particular business? And then the third thing is the recency and continuity of getting reviews so that Google is getting a signal every time you get a review that you are still in business, that you are legitimate, that real people are dealing with you. And those three things are, you know, of the, of the pyramid of things that Google looks at, which is roughly 200 different things, as far as that first search results for a local business, those are the big three. All right. Now, um, I, I, last time I did this for my school, it's been a while. Um, it seems to me there was a, a link uh, generated inside the, uh, at that time it was Google My Business that would make it easy for people to go directly to leave your reviews. That still exist? Yeah, you can get a, you can get a direct link. Mm -hmm. And assuming that you don't use our software, my recommendation is to go into that Google business and get that direct link and use it as you see fit either by making a short URL on using your website domain or adding it to the signature file of your email. But that's part of the due diligence. That first step when you go into Google and you do those type things, that is Google and Google's world. Now, if someone is doing something of, you know, more than they're going to do some due diligence, the next thing they're going to do is go, this company sounds good. They might go through to the website or they might take the name of that particular business and put it into Google. And that's when it starts getting interesting because that first page that comes back when you type in your business, you got your info box with your, your Google reviews on the uh, right hand side. But below that is the regular Google, the regular Google search results. And that is going to usually be Yelp, um, Facebook, if you have it. Uh, you know, if you're a hotel, TripAdvisor, if you're a lawyer, Avo, the sites that are industry specific for leaving reviews, and you want that page to be consistent and solid. Because if you don't, if the person sees that you have 70, 4.5 reviews on Google, but your Yelp rating is, you know, 17 and you've got two stars, something is not congruent. And when something mm -hmm. is not congruent, people don't want to buy. And that's where it gets weird. Because if monkeys look at, people and monkeys look at the preponderance of evidence. Is this safe? Am I going to have some risk here? Is How are they going to treat me if something goes wrong? So what you want is to produce all of the evidence that says there is no risk. If you respond to your reviews both on Google and Yelp and, and Facebook and all the, the major places. And every time there's a good review, you say, I am so glad that you had a great time with us. We work very hard to make sure that everyone blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and every bad review, you say, oh my goodness, I can't believe that our, we let you down. This is not, this is not acceptable. Please call Brian at 712, you know, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And he's waiting for your call and we're going to make this right. Now, that is the most powerful thing you can possibly do. Mm -hmm. Because you not only did you take the risk out by having good reviews, but you made you took the risk out by by responding intelligently to a bad review. That was more important than responding to the good reviews. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah, but it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, if you if you don't respond to the good reviews and you suddenly respond to bad reviews, people go, oh. So you don't want that to happen. But that and the way I frame this is: a review is data. A response to that review is a story. And when you write stories, you can change people's behavior. And you can sell people stuff. So, having an organic relationship with that market out there that is basically giving you tools to sell in the future this is this is a this is a, a part of the equity of your business you know if you go to sell your business and you've got you know 
2,800 reviews and they got a 4.9% review rating and you're on a whole bunch of different sites, that's actually valuable. Mm -hmm. That's like intellectual property mm -hmm. valuable. Yeah, so, and, I, and I saw a study recently that a five-star um, average review is not as believable as a 4.9 or 4.8. Right, <laughs> because and they people figure will you go and start reading, reading those reviews because they want to see what that one was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just our natural curiosity. If everything's written, if everything sounds like it's written by your mother, it might be written by your mother. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw an article uh, uh, on your site somewhere or let, yeah. let about uh, recognizing fake reviews. Right. And even uh, Amazon, a lot of those are still sneaking in because some of the vendors are kind of shysters. And they, if you have a bad review, they bribe you uh, with free mm -hmm. stuff or pay you to, to take it back. And <laughs> so, but you have to yeah, have Amazon is, a, yeah. is the wild west all over again in terms of reviews. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, nice. uh, they try to get uh, tight because if, uh, if you even let on that, you know, the person like, well, you know, I do a lot with uh, Kindle folks teaching, teaching them that and, um, they won't show the review, but still a lot of these ones that on all their, um, fulfilled by Amazon vendors are just sneaking in all kinds of crap. <laughs> so, so you really Yeah. Cause there's money to be made. Yeah, in it. The exactly. difference, the difference between a three star and a four star review is huge. Mm-hmm. And the difference between a four and a five is not as huge, but it's huge. So how so, does your software, um, and because keeping up with this stuff is what drives uh, small business people crazy. So how does your software help out with this? Well, the first, the first step is, is that all of your reviews on all of your platforms are aggregated at a single location mm -hmm. and you receive notifications from all of the different places. So especially like if you're in the travel sector and there's several very large travel sites or you're in the wedding sector and you, you care about Google, Facebook and Yelp, but you need to be on the not and wired and, you know, here come the brides and whatever other ones are out there. So that allows you to say, okay, I'm going to sit down at the end of the day and I'm going to see if there's anything, you know, you're going to get your email notifications and you're going to respond back to them. And it gives you one place to keep track of, where it is and you can also see if someone's left something bad so if you're only checking your reviews on one platform and you're not checking it on another one you know and there's a bad review and it's stinking up the joint for weeks that's not good uh it should be dealt with and so having a single source of where all of these things are coming from um some people are not going to want to leave it on google or maybe you have a really good google profile but all the other places are, are cruddy you can basically rotate through the other ones besides Google and keep filling those up. Now, Google sees other directory review sites. Do you get credit for them? You just don't see them in the Google universe. So if you're getting stuff from Yelp and you're getting stuff from Facebook, but you're going, oh, Google's not seeing it. Well, actually, yeah, they are. They're using what's called a schema format that is based on reviews. So Google can see what's happening on your reviews all on all the other websites that you mentioned. So you want, you want to have it completely automated. You can send, if you have a customer list, if you have an invoicing program, the time to ask someone for a review is when they're at the maximum joy from mm -hmm. your product or service. So if you're selling mattresses or cars, that's probably not 20 minutes after they buy it. You have to have some kind of timing mechanism in place so that three days out, you know, we'd love to know how you're enjoying your new Chrysler, or we'd love to know how your night's sleep have been the last three days. That kind of, you know, that kind of interaction based on what industry you're in gets you more reviews and gets you more complete reviews. And it makes the customer happier too, because if they're being asked at an inappropriate time, they're not going to review you or they're going to leave a, yeah, right. Review. You don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, the, it's critically important. That That's for sure. Have, has there been any studies done on how fast you reply to a review? Cause uh, you know, when my company, we're like lightning fast on anything, I get notification of anything. I'll drop whatever I'm doing, pull to the side of the road and take care of somebody instantly. Is there been any mm -hmm. studies on the value of that? Uh, I read the Bright Local Annual Report every year, and I've never seen any discussion of that 
other than do it as quickly as reasonably possible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just seems like it's a, a common sense thing, the faster. See, because what happens is, you know, because I, I used to teach customer service. The longer somebody mm -hmm. takes to get their problem resolved, the more they escalate the problem in their mind. I mean, I, I recall a situation where, you know, I had a problem with a toaster and I called, I think it was Sears at the time, and, and didn't get a return call. And call back the next day. And so now I'm gonna, I'm escalating the really problem with this toaster. And then like by the third or fourth day, I'm like, the toaster's on fire. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know so the faster you can take care of somebody, the, the faster I think, uh, or the better things turn out, you know, so. Yeah, it becomes an open loop and people know that they have to follow up on open loops and it makes them nuts. Yeah, and so, they also receive a notification after they get a response to their review too from Google or from Yelp or I, I'm trying to think if Facebook does it um, that says, thank you so much. I mean, it's actually from Google and says, thank you so much for leaving a review. It's great that you uh, were able to find that the, uh, the what's it flam is mm -hmm. working exactly the way you expected it to. Please feel free to call us if you have any other questions about the product or something mm -hmm. like that. Nice. That comes in their mail. Mm -hmm. So if you get back to them, if you do that an hour, not only, you know, not only have they now been acknowledged, but they now know that you are on top of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just basic customer service, which I have a lot of right. trouble with a lot of the, uh, hate to be, no, I don't really hate the stereotype people. <laughs> the, young, <laughs> the younger generation uh it doesn't seem to get this so so much uh you know but us old farts know that hey i'm gonna take care i'm in business to take care of people and it's paid off enormously for me but um, right so uh, we gotta take a brief sponsor break when we come back we're gonna ask stormy what a typical day looks like for her and uh, she'll tell us how to find this uh super review stuff she's got so, folks, sure. about uh, 25, 26 years ago now, um, I kind of turned the internet marketing guru world on its head, and that people at my level were charging 50 or 100 grand up front uh, to help you with your small business. And I, and I knew a lot of these people. You give them 50 grand up front, uh, you know, like we talked about earlier, you'd never be able to find them in Google search or with a private detective. <laughs> Take your money and run. So I said that's not that's too risky for small businesses and not fair. So so I I kind of made them all mad in that I charged an entry fee which is like 10 times cheaper than what they were charging and then I tied my success to your success. So for me to get my 50 grand you had to net 250 grand. And so they're like wow, we love this. This guy's not going to disappear. And here I sit 25 years later, still helping people. I could have quit 20 some years ago. And I just love helping small businesses. And it gives them a chance to have access to high level help without, uh, you know, too risky and breaking the bank. So, so 1800 plus students later, it's still going strong. So it's the longest running, most unique, most, uh, successful mentor in, in internet and digital marketing ever. And I triple dog dare people to put their program up against mine because I'm a crazy fanatic. Actually, through, oh, Thanksgiving's coming up here, Stormy. I actually accidentally threw a teleclass one time on Thanksgiving because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't notice it was Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> and guess what? 60 people showed up for it. I made 3,500 bucks that night because they didn't want to hear their uncle junk uncle bitching at the football game i guess so uh, so anyway uh, it's got all kinds of unique features you actually uh, get an immersion weekend here at the retreat center in virginia beach we have our own tv studio and uh, it's all one-on-one -on -one. we don't do anything group because uh, i don't want to lump you in with people more experienced or less experienced so it's very efficient uh, you know it's one-on-one -on -one with me and my entire team just all kinds of great perks. Plus, you get a scholarship to my school, which is the only licensed, dedicated internet and digital marketing school in the country, probably the world. And um, you can either use it yourself or gift it to somebody to keep somebody that you love out of the indoctrination four-year college camps they have nowadays that put them in debt, and then they're begging for jobs at Starbucks. So... Um, Check it out at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. It's um, easily accessible, and uh, there's no high pressure here. We're, we just want to uh, help you small businesses uh, really uh, turn it on. 
All right, let's get back to the main event. We got Stormy Knight here, and she is a, a specialist in reviews, reputation management, local search, and she's been in the game a long time. You can't believe it because she looks like she's 12 years old. But um, <laughs> <laughs> other than that, so uh, Stormy, what's uh, what's a typical day look like for you nowadays? Um, I mean, here's here's what I'm talking about. Do you get up early? Do you have a morning routine? Do you work out? What do you eat? I mean, besides business stuff. Uh, well, I get up early. Uh, what's that? Early is uh, subjective. What what time? Four thirty. Oh no, yeah, you got it. That's early. <laughs> uh, and I generally in the office by about five thirty after you know breakfast and clean up and you know doing stuff. I don't. I don't really exercise per se in the morning because uh, that's really my sharpest focus period of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, I spend about. And that's 8.30 the on go, the East Coast, you know, so. Yeah, well, yeah, 4.30 p.m. Pacific or time. Or 5.30, 5.30. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then 5.30 in the office, generally, um, spend about a half hour getting the day straightened out. Um, that gives me roughly four and a half to five hours of of clear thinking um and and really you know in in business or in terms of if you're working for somebody if you can get three solid hours in in a day that's good mm -hmm. and um that allows me to have a couple of hours before anybody is going to be emailing me or sending me anything and that's the most high value time period that i have in a day um and then so it's like the the red priority stuff in the morning goes until about 9 30 10 o'clock uh at 9 30 10 o'clock we go to the mid range where i'm replying to emails i'm doing calls if it's high high you know importance um and then have lunch at around 11 30 and then that's when i do about a half hour of yoga and weights and then i check email again because it, it tends to recycle after lunch and uh, then I do a walk with my husband and my dog. Nice. And um, then I clean up anything else. So that's really my day. I'm generally out of here by 3, 3.30. Wow, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, Which yeah, is still, started... a, you know, an eight-hour right. plus or minus day. But it gives me time to go make bread or sit in the backyard and space or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that kind of stuff it's lifestyle business that's what we're all about here that's, yeah absolutely yeah great all right sounds good so um so uh, tell us how they uh, find this um uh, this service here sure um i'm at five stars fast and that's the numeral five mm -hmm. stars plural fast dot com and you can see a demonstration at that location. Uh, you can, um, we have a library of documents for people. Just uh, reach out to me at stormy at five stars fast.com and I can send you a link to the library or I can give you a link to the library, Tom. Yeah, we'll put it in the show um, notes for him. Yeah, I, I think it's in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so five stars fast and, you know, it'll give, give you a lot of tools to generate more reviews. Yeah, and so um, uh, so if you were uh, not a local business, reviews are still important, you know. So so I imagine you can. Uh, it's still usable for people that aren't local businesses, right? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, if you're a consultant and you serve the whole United States, mm -hmm. and you specialize in a particular type of stuff, like my client that I had, having zero reviews, and the other one guys have two or three hundred. Mm, doesn't look good mm -hmm. yeah so exactly. you've got to, you've got to compete with your competitors wherever they're located not just local for sure well thanks for coming on uh, miss sure. story yeah so uh everybody check out um uh the the show notes will have uh, her email and uh, a link to the um i guess it's a kind of a library she'll have for you and mm -hmm. uh, the service uh, you, uh did you say you can get a demo of the service there's actually a demo on embedded on the site oh, that good, shows good. how, it, so how you, can you interact see how, with it. How it actually works. So you can uh, grab those reviews that are so critical nowadays uh, for your success. So, so thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you, Tom. It's been great. Okie dokie, folks. So we will catch you all on the next episode. See you later.